it's not going to work. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, Kathy. Again, I'm Jason Oram with Jazz Design Company. And uh, as I was thinking about this presentation, I was thinking, well, how can I relate to a bunch of financial types? And turns out, in a previous life, I was a food and beverage purchaser and created a lot of systems for purchasing food and beverage online for Stowe Mountain Resort um, in Vermont. And if you've ever worked in the ski industry, you know it's all downhill. <laughs> so on to marketing for businesses online. And uh, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn and Facebook. And I wish my little gadget worked here, but oh, there it is working. Sweet. All right. So um, LinkedIn is a hugely popular business network, as you probably all know. How many people have LinkedIn pages? Most of the room. OK, great. And for those of you, of you that do, we're going to go through uh, some ways to improve those. Those of you that don't, you'll have a lot of tips after this to be able to set up your profiles and um, be able to allow you to market a seven company using them. There are lots and lots of people um, joining a LinkedIn at two members per second. There are over one million groups on LinkedIn, and these groups contain between two and 250,000 people. Um, there was three bil billion searches on LinkedIn as of September 2012, and over 25 um, million uh, LinkedIn uh, profiles viewed. Um, every day. So it's a huge network and it works really well. The first thing I want to go over is to um, give you some tips about uh, your profile and why you should not have an incomplete LinkedIn profile. Almost half of LinkedIn profiles are incomplete, unbelievably. So when you set it up, the first thing you should do is use a professional photo. Uh, this can be uh, something that portrays your personality, and it can also uh, or be very professional. In uh, this setting, I would imagine you want your professional headshot to be up there. That would be a really good idea. Head or head, or head and shoulders. Um, and then in your headline, you want to provide SEO value. So uh, depending on what you do for the company, you want to make sure that your headline uh, has search terms. And I'm going to talk about SEO during this because in LinkedIn it's very important to make sure your profiles are optimized for searches. That's how people will find you. And you can also create a custom linked URL. When you start your page you'll have a URL that they assign you. You can change that to be custom. I would recommend you do that right away. The first thing that comes up uh, in the default profile is your acti activity. It's a good idea to occasionally post things that are going on. It's like any social media, uh, post things that are um, going on in your office, post things that are going on in, um, in the company. It will automatically post up, uh, updates and interests that happen on your profile. So it's not something that's going to be remain, uh, remain empty all the time. The summary is really important. And I wish this, I could read this a little bit better, but uh, basically in the summary, uh, you want to make sure that you are yourself and that it comes across as not a uh, robotic type of a, uh, a, a bio, but a little bit about you. Break it up so that it's easy to read and and go through as people are skimming because as we all know everybody's busy and when they when you want to find information you want to find it fast they're going to skim down through that's why I have mine broken up into uh, different sections I've also put my email address in there and it's not um, my full email address that will be picked up by robots I break it up so it's Jason space at sign space jazz design co space dot com so that it's not picked up, but that will allow people to contact you and connect with you on there a little bit easier. It's a great tip that you can keep in mind. Uh, some people like that, some people don't. The other thing in, um, 
in the, the, the summary is uh, you want to place search terms, keywords that you would want people to find you uh, for. And think about that as you're setting it up. What do you do for the company? Uh, why would people uh, find you? What search terms would they use to do that? And a good exercise is to ask other people in the company what they would use to find you on LinkedIn, and you can use those ideas. And um, Oh yeah, refrain from blocks of text, that's the last thing on there. The additional info area allows you again to put uh, very targeted search terms in there, internet marketing, information marketing, search engine optimization, social media. Though this is from my page, obviously that's what we do, so we want to make sure that's highlighted. You can choose to or you don't have to put your personal details in there. Um, and then again, advice for contacting. You want to be, make it easy for people to contact you on there. Again, I put my email address in there with spaces so robots can't pick it up as easy. And I've also included my phone number with my extension. The recommendations area is really important. To get recommendations, give recommendations. It, you'll be surprised how many people will recommend you back if you go ahead and give them a recommendation. And you don't need a thousand recommendations. Two or three is considered a uh, complete LinkedIn for profile. So don't think that this is going to take a long time to do. It's not actually that hard to do. And, but, but it is important to have recommendations on there. If you've been on LinkedIn lately, you've noticed this is a new feature, a skills and expertise. It allows other users of LinkedIn that are connected to you to um, endorse you for the different skills and expertise uh, based on the description, your summary. So the search terms will come up. Is this person good at SEO? I have 37 people that have endorsed me for SEO, 22 for web design, and so on. It's, it's a good idea to do that for other people, and again, they will then turn around and do it for you, possibly. It comes up at the, uh, when you're on your profile, you've probably seen it, would you like to endorse this person? It's a grid of four people, and you can choose to endorse them all, or some people, or not endorse anyone. But um, that's a, another way to get endorsements, is by giving them. You can actually rearrange the order of your summary, your, all of these things that we just went over, uh, you can rearrange the order. When you edit, there's a, uh, sorry, there's a, uh, a little arrow over here. You can click that and drag it up or down. So what I have done is actually put the, the um, skills part as my second, right under my summary, so you can organize your profile. A lot of people don't know you can do that. It's actually a great way to organize it and um, put the things that you want people to read first at the top. So now that you have a LinkedIn profile and it's updated, by the way, there are a lot of other things to do to update your profile. I could stand here for two hours and talk about it. Obviously, we don't have that much time. So um, definitely go in there and do those things. Those are some of the most important things that I've found. Um, and then after you have your updated profile, you want people to be able to find it. I've used Kathy's because she's done a good job of um, adding her link in her email signature um, to her LinkedIn profile so that she can get more people to uh, connect with her on LinkedIn, which is the idea. And then Q she's also using a QR code here. QR codes are great. Um, to allow people from their mobile device to scan your QR code and they can go right to your LinkedIn profile. And anywhere you have a printed material, especially on your business card, I suggest using a QR code uh, in order to uh, get more people to connect with you on LinkedIn. You can connect QR codes to, um, to really anything. They're essentially uh, a little code that's scanned by uh, a phone app 
which you probably all have, and they can go to, like I said, any web page. Okay, so in this section, um, how do we connect with other people? Well, the easiest way to do that is to actually connect with people you're connected with. And this is uh, something that you can do by going to your connections, which is the third tab, and you'll see a list of all your connections here. You can click on them, and then their information comes up here on the right. You can look at who they're connected with. It lists everybody there. And it spend a few minutes, a week, a day, however long you have, but go through and connect with other people that way um, because that's a great way to grow your profile. You are connected with them at a first level connection, so you're allowed to do that. Another way to connect with uh, people that you're not a first or second level connection with is to upgrade your profile. This isn't for everyone. It's a monthly subscription, but it allows us to connect with people outside our networks and, and email them directly. LinkedIn keeps that somewhat, um, they, they've uh, narrowed down the number of people you can connect, connect with because they want to grow networks, but this is a way to pay them to <laughs> allow you to market. And you can use this a couple of different ways. You can use this to connect with prospective clients, and you can also use this to connect with people that you might be trying to recruit. So depending on who you are and what your position is with the company, this may be a really useful tool to um, utilize. Groups and associations. You can leverage your knowledge and professional insight using groups. They can be very time consuming, uh, so I'm not going to go into them too much, but they definitely uh, are valuable and a way for you to connect with other people because if you are uh, part of a group, you can connect with any other member of that group. So that is something to keep in mind. I recommend joining one or two. Keep them very industry specific. Typically, the more members of that group, the better. Some of them will... Um, be closed groups that you'll have to uh, ask to join, but that when you get into those groups, there's a lot of potential there. And make it a point to participate in discussions maybe one or two times a week if you have the time. Even if it's once a month, that's still better than nothing. And this is what I was saying about connecting. So now you are part of a group and you want to connect with somebody in there. Maybe you saw something that Teresa posted, you're interested in connecting with her, you can actually go and here, this is what it comes up with when you want to connect with somebody that you're not a uh, first level connection with, uh, you'll be able to connect with them because you're part of a group. You can include a personal note and I really encourage you not to just go ahead and keep what the default text is in there, because that looks really generic and it'll probably be deleted right away. I would encourage you to type a personal note, hey, I saw your post, I was interested in what you said. Anything like that that can create a personal connection will get them to pay a lot more attention to you. Because people are busy, if they don't know that you, they might just skim right by. So that's a good way to connect. Okay, some tools that you might be interested in utilizing. I don't know how many people uh, use Gmail in here, but there's a really neat tool to be able to, uh, it's a plugin for Firefox uh, or Chrome that will actually show you uh, when you email people uh, what their feed is, their LinkedIn, um, you can connect with them with LinkedIn and Facebook. It's called the Reportive plugin, R-A-P-P-O-R-T-I-V-E, and it contains rich, rich contact profiles within Gmail. Uh, another application within LinkedIn that is, uh, could be really good for this group is the SlideShare app. For any presentations that you give, you can actually install this plugin on your LinkedIn profile and upload presentations so that people, when they view your profile, can actually go through your SlideShare presentations that you've created. Uh, a great way to connect and share information. 
Another application is called BoxNet, box.net, and that is great for file sharing. And uh, for large groups, it can be from five people to 5,000 people you can create, you can share files. I'm sure you have ways to share files already, but this is specifically uh, for LinkedIn. Again, with recruiting, like I said, uh, the uh, in-mail feature by upgrading your account, you can use to um, uh, connect with people that are outside of your networks. And uh, so there's a great potential to find qualified people uh, to join your organization, uh, you can research networks, see who's participating in the dis discussions. So LinkedIn is uh, very good for that. Uh, this is our uh, LinkedIn uh, company page, and I know you have one too. What I, why I wanted to display this is because uh, when you up post updates, they um, it's kind of like uh, any social media network uh, or Facebook you'll have an opportunity to include uh, articles or anything uh, about your company in there, and uh, we'll be helping with that as part of the social media management service that we'll be providing for SF and Company. So that is um, basically uh, what I had to go over. I'm not sure how I am on time, but I can take a few questions, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's 11.29. Hi, my Kathy. Uh, am I good for time? Should I? Um, uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah, it, any, I can take a few. One, two, three questions. Yes, sir. Can you elaborate on your custom link URL and the, the pros and cons of that? Absolutely. You know, when you edit your profile, you can go in and you know have a long number after it. But what I suggest is you just use your full name. It'll be uh, LinkedIn. Uh, slash, you know, try to pull it up here. Oh. I'm going into the next <coughs> presentation. But it, any, anyway, it'll be LinkedIn um, slash in, I believe, and then you can change what's after that. So mine is Jason Orem. It's my full name. And that way it's easy for people to remember. It's easy to print on business cards and that sort of thing. It's a good question. Anyone else? I did a, that good of a job. Nobody has any questions. Awesome. Well, yeah, I encourage you right away. Definitely get a profile if you don't have one. Make sure that you set it up and it's completely filled out. You'll see when you set it up that they give you a score. Is your profile completely set up or is it 50% set up? Just follow the steps. W walk through what they tell you to do um, and to complete your profile. And some of it will be, hey, you need some more recommendations, that type of thing. But it's, uh, it's really important. It's a great uh, tool for um, this type of environment. This company could definitely benefit uh, from marketing within, because you're all here to market your business, market SF and company. So this is a great way to do it. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Applause. And next, uh, Adrian's going to be talking about the new Facebook, uh, Facebook page that we set up and uh, how we can use that to help market. All right, thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. OK, I'll take that. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Facebook fan page that we've recently, in the last week, developed for SF and Company. And the first thing I'm gonna do is ask for some participation. I would like everybody to get out whatever internet connected device you might have. And if you are connected to Facebook, I would like you to find the SF and Company fan page. And I'll tell you how to do that if you don't know how to do it. I'll give you guys a couple minutes, but while I'm doing that, or while you guys are doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about Facebook and why do we want to be on Facebook. Uh, obviously, we want to be on Facebook because everybody else is on Facebook. Uh, currently, there are, th this is actually even a little bit old. This is from last month, and if you understand how quickly Facebook changes, you would understand that a week is an eternity on social media. Uh, there are roughly about a billion users on Facebook. And out of those billion users worldwide, about 170 million are in the United States. And about half of those users 
go on Facebook anywhere from one to six hours a day. I know it sounds crazy, but they do, and it's because they're connected mobile. It's connected, uh, they're at home and they're chatting and they're doing all this crazy stuff. Uh, a lot of that is people who are just constantly connected and not, they're not actually on there all day long, kind of like me, but that's my job. Um, but uh, anyway, you want to be there because the people are there. And the average user has about 130 friends. So if you do the math, and you guys are all numbers people, if SF and company post something on their fan page, and one person who likes the fan page decides, hey, that's pretty cool, I'm going to post that on my, my uh, newsfeed, their 130 friends can see that. And if that person prompts somebody else to do something, 130 friends, 130 friends. It goes on and on and on. So it's a little bit viral. Um, this is the, uh, just a little screenshot of the new fan page. How many people have been to it? Does anybody know about it? Good. I'm going to tell you how to get there. So if you're on the Facebook um, website or on your app, you can go to the search box and start typing in SF and company, just like your logo is, no spaces and then space York, it should populate in the search. And once you've gotten to that, um, raise your hands if you've gotten to it, and then that way I won't go too quickly. Got one person, people getting there, you're finding it? Okay, it looks like this, sweet. Okay, please like it. Everybody like it. We're gonna get our vanity URL as soon as everybody likes it, so ideally, how many people are doing this right now? Raise your hands. That's it? Come on, people, aren't, aren't all of you connected? How many people are connected to Facebook? Who has a profile? Okay, all right, okay. Hopefully we'll get our vanity URL out of this, but uh, that's good, and we got you to like the page. Um, some of the basics of Facebook. Um, the first thing, we just did this, you like the page, awesome. The next thing that is really important that you guys do is you need to make sure that your employment and your about me section on your Facebook profile lists that you work for SF and company. If you've already done that, you may need to delete what you already have. And the reason why is because we want it to connect to this fan page. So what you would do if you need to delete it, go ahead, it's not a big deal. It takes five seconds to recreate it. Um, you go to your uh, own profile and, whoops, wrong button. Uh, you go to your own profile, still not what I want, and right over to the right of your name, you see this is mine, there's an update info button. And that will take you to your about me area, and you want to go to the work and education area and type in SF and company space York, like you just did to find the page, and you want to select it when it comes up. Once that happens and you do that and you press select, it's going to take you to a little gray box that pops up and you have to fill all the stuff in, how long you've been worked there, what your title is, so on and so forth. And then you add the job. Once you've done that, whenever somebody sees you on Facebook, your little about me section underneath your, your profile icon will say that you work for SF and company and it will become a link. And that's just gonna be another way for people to find the page and that's what we want. We want people to find the page. Now, yes. Okay, you put SF and companies, no spaces, and then space York. It's an ampersand? Yes, it's an ampersand. Yep, just like the logo. And you have to do the space York. Yeah, you have to do the space York or you won't find it. Yeah. Well, it's, the other reason why it's very important you do the space is because um, the page is not yet optimized. It's, it's so brand new, it's very hard for it to come up in searches. Okay, if you go to your own profile page. You might, if you're on the, the mobile app, you're probably not gonna have the same functionality. Yeah, if you guys are on the mobile app and you're trying to do what I just told you to do for your profile to get, um, to update your, um, your work and uh, education to have SS and company connected, you might have to do that through an internet connection, not through an app, because the app has limited functionality. Um, you can do that when you go home if you need to. Um, the next thing I would really like everybody to try and do, and some people get a little like, eh, I don't really want to do this, I don't want to bug my friends and family, but you should be, you know, everybody knows where you work, they know what you do, share the page with them. You know, they're, they're more likely going to be people that are going to support you and what you do, and they're going to refer people to you. So it's not a big deal if you share the page and let them know, like, hey, my company, 
has a new fan page and it's pretty cool, you should check it out. Um, what you would want to do once you've liked the page is you are on the SF and Company fan page here and next to the liked button you'll see a little gear and if you click it a little uh, drop down box will come down and you'll see almost at the bottom there is a share button and when you hit that what will happen is a, a window will pop up and it will prompt you to write something in a status update that shares the page with everybody. And you just write a couple things. You can say, here's our new fan page. Uh, check it out. Um, let us know what you think. Doesn't, whatever. Whatever you want to write. It doesn't really matter. Um, once you do that, it'll go to your news feed. And that will prompt your friends and family to check it out. And that should hopefully boost uh, the new page with some new likes and some new activity. Another thing that you guys can do once the page gets going, once we start getting some content on there, please try and share some of the content that will be eventually shared on the SF and Company page. If you have, like, we post something that's a great tip, a new, a new tax law or whatever, you can go to one of the posts on the fan page and underneath the post, you'll see, this is an actual post that we just put up, um, you'll see there's a like, comment, and share. If you click that share button, this window pops up and you can see that the article or the post is right here. And you can just type whatever it is, like this is really great information, make sure you check it out before you file your taxes this year, something along those lines. And that too will go to your news feed. So try and do that at least, at least a couple times a month. That's going to help boost the fan page quite a bit and we would really appreciate it. This part I'm going to kind of skip a little bit. Um, if we don't really want everybody to be posting on the page, um, there's only going to be uh, Kathy and you said Lynn, Lynette, um, are going to be responsible along with myself for posting content to the page. But by all means, if you have uh, content that you think would be really good for the fan page, email it to Kathy or Lynette or myself um, and we will definitely do our, you know, our job to get it up there. But for now, don't, don't do any actual posting on the page as yourself. Um, admins are going to post. Um, but just to give you an idea of what kind of content is good to post on the fan page, um, any sort of uh, news, financial news or tax law updates, um, tips and advice that your clients can gain from. One of the biggest things people have trouble grasping, or I should say our clients have trouble grasping, is that giving something away for free is a good thing. <laughs> if, um, if you can basically get people to know, like, and trust you because you give them valuable information that they gain from, then that's just all the better in social media. If they say, wow, yes? Why would we give away something that we're trying to sell? Not necessarily your services, just tips and advice. Small things. You don't have to give away the whole, the whole you know, enchilada. You just, you want to give little things. Little things that they say, you know what? That was a really good tip. And the next time I need tax advice, I'm going to call him because he seems to know what he's doing. Basically, you just want to get them to trust you and, and, and know you. So little tips, not big tips. <laughs> um, any sort of employee news or bios, if somebody you know, has some big promotion or you, know, you have a, like the example I showed, there was a presentation somebody did, that type of information is really good to put up. So if there's an article that you know of that has covered that type of news, you can send it to Kathy or Lynette. Office news, I, I, I don't. Want, I don't know what goes on in your offices, but I'm sure you guys aren't all business all the time. I'm sure you guys have some fun <laughs> sometimes. So if there's any sort of fun things like a Christmas party or whatever, things like that, it shows that you're people, not just number crunchers, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so those are good things. If you have images or video that you think would be good for the fan page that shows um, the personality side of the business, that's something to send to Kathy or Lynette. Um, this one's pretty big, and this goes with what Jason was saying with Face, or excuse me, LinkedIn. Um, industry recommendations are really, really big in social media. Um, it's basically a you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours type of thing. Um, it, e even if it's the sub shop across the street where you get your lunch every day, tell people that you like that business and that you use that business and you recommend other people do too. If it's the bookkeeping firm that you, you know, collaborate with on some account, you know, tell them how, what a great job that they do. Um, that type of stuff really goes a long way. So it's, it's something that you should always consider doing and doing it relatively, I'd say one to three times a month. Um, industry humor, that can be a, a cartoon, it can be you know, a, a joke, whatever, you know, that type of stuff is, uh, shows personality. Um, and like what not to do posts. This goes back to the tips. You know? 
if you've got a tip for people that think that you really shouldn't do when you're filing your taxes or doing your estate planning, then that's the kind of thing that you should definitely be posting. Um, and then lastly, you know, anything that you see on another page that is working, that you see gets all these likes and people are commenting on it, mimic that, copy. Uh, and, and really, you know, you want to stay um, personable. So you only want to post things that you would actually say to somebody in a conversation that you would say face to face. Even though it's through, um, you know, technology, internet, it's still uh, social media. It's still having social connections with people. And never ever post anything political, religious, or negative. Just rule, especially when it comes to business. You don't ever want to post those things. Um, and obviously we're not, are asking that you don't post, but if you have anything that you would like to post, this is my email address and you can write it down if you'd like. Um, most people don't know how to spell my first name, so there it is. Uh, you can send it to me, or again, you can send it to Kathy or Lynette. Um, and we, we're going to ask that once the page gets established, we're really hoping that everybody here can help us promote the page. A lot of these are pretty simple things to do. Obviously, we're going to add the Facebook badge to the website once it's ready to go. Uh, add your Facebook URL to your email signature, just like Jason was saying for LinkedIn. Um, and I will get that to you once we get the vanity URL. Don't go grabbing it right now because it's got a bunch of numbers and digits and it's this really long thing. Um, once we get it going, it'll be facebook.com forward slash SF and Company York, most likely. Um, ask your clients. If, if you have a client that you think would do it, um, you can usually read people who's interested in doing this type of thing. But if you can say, hey, if, if you don't mind, would you mind, mind posting on the SF and Company fan page you know, your testimonial, what, what you just told me? Um, ask people to do that, and a lot of times people will. So that's always really good content um, coming from other people, especially clients. And generally, and this is something that we'll talk about, um, you know, once we get everything going, we're hoping to get the URL printed on all uh, printed and electronic materials so that people will see it and, uh, and get to the page. So that would be things like newsletters and invoices and business cards. And that concludes my presentation. But if anybody has questions, I'm happy to answer anything, uh, whether it's related to the fan page or Facebook in general. So does anybody have questions? Go ahead. Do you have to sign up as an individual? I'm not on Facebook. Okay. Uh, is it individual related to sign up? Or if you go through a business route like LinkedIn, is it signed up? Um, well, the fan, the fan page should be searchable um, if you don't have a Facebook account. It's just that it's extremely limited. You're not going to be able to see a whole lot. You'll be able to see the page, um, but because you don't have an account, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot. So, I mean, Facebook itself is social media, so they rely on the connections that other people have through their profiles in order for it to operate correctly. So that's you just sign up as an individual, do an account. Ideally, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you, I mean, if you don't, if you don't. It's your prerogative, you know. But uh, you know, it's just one of those things if. You want to start dabbling in this, you know, for business purposes. A lot of people now are signing up for Facebook, a personal account, just so that they can use it for business. They're not connecting to friends and family because they're not interested in doing that type of social media. So you could do that if you wanted to and essentially block people from, from finding you in, in the manner that, you know, finding your name and your, your email address. So that is possible. You can button it up. Anybody else? Wow, we do a really good job, don't we? Nobody has questions. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I hope you guys uh, definitely get to the. Did everybody get to the fan page? Did anybody? Everybody liked it. Cool. Awesome. Make my job easy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>